Hi folks, this is Dr. Kalika here, and today we're going to talk about sciatica. Uh, so there are two types of sciaticas. One type of sciatica is the sciatica that comes from the spine. So whenever you have uh, a herniated disc or perhaps some uh, arthritic changes in the spinal uh, facet joints, it can encroach on the foramen, on the opening where the spinal nerve root is coming out and it can cause sciatica symptoms. Sciatica symptoms is pain that travels from the back down to the leg or from the bottom down to the leg. Um, so we're actually not going to concentrate on the spinal sciatica today, but we're going to talk about a sciatica that comes from the pelvis, from the hip. Uh, these sciaticas are not uncommon and they're not easy to treat. Uh, in the past, most of these sciaticas were attributed to piriformis syndrome. However, in the past five years, as diagnostic ultrasonography has become um, uh, high resolution and more prevalent, and we've been uh, really advancing in uh, seeing sciatic nerve and seeing these muscles and seeing the anatomy here, we realized that a pure piriformis syndrome is extremely rare. So what is piriformis syndrome? You have a muscle that comes from, from uh, the hip joint, from the hip, um, from here actually, and it travels all the way to the hip joint. So the muscle actually travels down to your trochanter. That muscle is actually closing a little bit this, uh, this space, which is called sciatic foramen, and the sciatic nerve comes out from here. Then it's, it can have a couple scenarios where either the sciatic nerve can penetrate through the muscle, it can go above the muscle and then come down, or it can travel completely below the muscle. So if this nerve is compressed due to a problem, whether this muscle is hypertrophic or hypertonic, this used to be called piriformis syndrome. However, what we know right now that this uh, is extremely rare. Uh, what we see with these sciaticas is that actually the, the, over the course of this nerve through these muscles, and the muscles are piriformis, uh, superior gemelli, obturator internus, inferior gemelli, and then quadratus femoris, and then the hamstring, which attaches here. So all these back hip muscles, um, uh, they're what we call subgluteal muscles, and today we call it actually subgluteal space syndrome. And actually, we, what we know right now is that the nerve is being pulled on, in multiple places, uh, and uh, there's very complex anatomy between the interaction of these muscles and anatomical variations, and the ultrasonography is actually giving us exactly the place where that nerve is stuck, because we can rotate the hip and we can see the tension on the nerve. We can also measure each muscle, where, whether that muscle is hypertonic, um, and whether that uh, the muscle is different from the other side. So for example, if you went to do an MRI, they would only do one side. The advantage with ultrasound is that we can compare side to side, and this way we know which muscle is hypertrophic. The other advantage with ultrasonography is that we can do elastography and we can measure each muscle, it's the stiffness or elasticity of each muscle, and also actually compare to the other side, to the non-symptomatic side. So we identified the sciatic nerve and we trace it all the way up, so I moved further proximally, keeping sciatic nerve in the middle of the screen, and the next structure I come is this tendon right here, this is called obturator internus, it comes over the um, the, the bone here and then it falls inside and if you see it moves so this is another location where sciatic nerve can be tensioned um, and the sciatic nerve is, is right here so if I then go up and change the probe orientation the next muscle that's going to come into view is going to be piriformis and piriformis is is this structure here. So if I start moving, so if I start moving, you will see that this mus muscle moves, and this is the glute max on top, which is not gonna move, and this is the piriformis. And this is another place 
where the sciatic nerve can be tension. High resolution diagnostic ultrasonography is an extremely useful tool in diagnosing uh, sciatica syndromes and uh, problems in the subluteal space. Uh, it has an advantage over MRI where we can trace the nerve. We can also do uh, neural, t uh, neural tension test on the ultrasound, which is another um, subject for another demonstration, which is extremely helpful in these cases. We can also guide treatment, uh, like injections in these muscles, and also we can gauge our progress with elastography because we can see the elasticity of the muscle and see if the treatment that we use is affecting this elasticity. Um, thank you very much.